Welcome to the Divorce in Your Money podcast. I'm your host, Sean Lehman. I'm an MBA and certified divorce financial analyst and author of the book, Divorce in Your Money, The No-Nonsense Guide. My mission is to help you make smart financial decisions during one of the most difficult time periods in your life. Visit the website, divorceinyourmoney.com, or email me at sean, S-H-A-W-N, at divorceandyourmoney.com. Today's episode covers retirement plans, and there's some very important information you need to know about this subject, especially if you might have any type of retirement plan. It's a very complex area. And I'm going to focus on some high level details for now because I, as always, I always want to make sure that the listeners and you in particular understand the basics before we get very deep into any particular type of retirement plan or super specific issue. And the first we're going to start with is what a retirement plan is in general. I'm going to just go through some of the most common types, which you may have or may be familiar with. And if you don't have one, your spouse might have one. And so you likely have a retirement plan and hopefully have a retirement plan in some form. So you need to be aware of how they work. There's 401k plans, 403b plans, 457 plans. Those are in the category of defined contribution plans. There's pensions, which are also called defined benefit plans, and IRAs. If you have any type of individual retirement account, that would be a type of retirement plan. And I went through those quickly, but we're going to go into each one in a little bit more depth so that you have a pretty good understanding of the basics and the terminology. Now, we're going to start with IRAs, the individual retirement accounts. Most of you, if you even just listen to the news, you have heard of this type of account. And if you work a job or have worked at some point in your life, it's one of the most common types of plans. So it is very likely that you or your spouse has an IRA of some kind. And at a high level, the way they work is you contribute a certain percentage of your income and that gets removed from what you have to pay in taxes. Now, that's an oversimplified example, but that's the very gist of it. And you, the earnings in that plan get to grow with uh, tax-free or tax-deferred. It depends on the type of IRA. Now, there are so some of the types of IRAs that exist is like a traditional IRA where you contribute money that's that's pre-tax, so it's yet to be taxed, and you can contribute money into this account up to the age of 70 and a half is the way today's laws are written. And after that age, you have to withdraw X percentage each year. It's a calculation that the government has come up with. It's it's pretty simple if you ever are interested in that type of thing. And you might have a Roth IRA, which is different from a traditional IRA in that with a Roth IRA, you contribute money, what's called after tax dollars. And there's also no mandatory withdrawal age. And it's a little bit better with distributions in terms of the restrictions on when you can take them with a Roth IRA. It's a little bit more of a flexible account, but the downside, so to speak, is that you have to contribute after tax dollars. You could have a simple IRA, which is something more common in small businesses, or a SEP IRA, where actually the company makes contributions to the plan and not necessarily the individual employee. And the good news about IRAs is dividing them in divorce is easy. Ultimately, it just requires an order from the court that says how the assets are to be split. And there aren't really lots of special tax consequences or anything like that when you divide an IRA. And it's one of the easiest assets to split in divorce. And so there's some benefits to IRAs and some questions about what types of distributions you can take when you are going through the divorce process. We'll save that for another episode. But just know that if you have an IRA, it is one of the easiest assets to split and there's no special real uh, consequences or, or anything that you really need to know in great depth other than a court order to, to split the IRA. Now, it's going to get a lot more complicated when we start talking about pension plans and defined contribution plans. Now, I want to keep the terminology simple. A pension plan is very common. They are less common today, but, but historically they are very common in the United States. But they are plans where a company or organization guarantees a specific benefit to the 
holder of it or the, the owner of it. And when I say specific benefit, that means each month you are guaranteed a certain dollar amount of income. And it depends on, you know, your age and how long you may have worked for a particular company or if you were in the military or some sort of state organization uh, still have pension plans. But they'll say when you retire uh, at age 55 or 60 or 65, they might say, well, you are entitled to receive uh, $1,500 bucks a month. Or they might say you're entitled to receive 60% of your salary while you were working, something like that. There's a variety of different ways, and they're, they're pretty complex as to how they're structured, but they're called defined benefit plans because the benefit that you receive is, in theory, guaranteed and is certainly defined. And when I say in theory guaranteed, some pension plans have had some big issues in the past. That's why I say it's not always guaranteed, but hopefully it is, and you, you have a good company that supports the pension if you have one. And those are, as I said, the defined benefit plans. Now, defined contribution plans are different, but it's easy to keep the distinction between a defined benefit and defined contribution plan pretty simple. It's defined com contribution plans are called that because as an employee, you define, you decide how much you're going to contribute to the plan. And your outcome or what you can withdraw from the plan later in life depends on uh, how much you contributed and what the earnings were in the plan. And it's not guaranteed and it's not a fixed amount like it is with a defined benefit plan. So a defined contribution plan is a plan that you might have heard of like a 401k or a 403b or a 457, or a thrift plan, profit sharing plan, a money purchase plan, employee stock ownership plan, or ESOP. Those are very common types of defined contribution plans. And if you have one of these plans, you need to be aware of how to split it. And when it comes to defined contribution plans or defined benefit plans, they have the same method for how you divide them. And while the explanation I'm going to give you is not too complicated, in practice, it is a very complicated decision and very complicated split that you're going to have to go through when it comes to these plans. The main method for splitting a defined contribution and defined benefit plan is called a QDRO, a Qualified Domestic Relations Order, also called a Quadro. And they are specific to defined contribution and defined benefit plans. And they give specific instructions on how to split the assets in a defined benefit or defined contribution plan. And it gets very complicated because if you, if you know how we'll just take a pension plan, for instance, if you know how it works, the calculation for what goes into how you, how much you receive in your pension can be very complicated. It can have to do with your age, your salary, how many years you work for the company, and a myriad of other factors that you need to be aware of in order to make the calculation. It's not always straightforward. And same with defined contribution plans. If you think about splitting something that you can't necessarily withdraw from for 10 or 20 years down the line, you have some bitty, really hard questions to, to ask. Do you wait 10 years before the plan is officially split and you split the value then? Or do you want to get the value as defined? amount, or I should say a specific amount of the plan today, or what happens when, you know, let's say your divorce takes a year long in between uh, settlement and discussions and going back and forth and negotiations, etc. Well, what happens if, you know, the plan was worth, uh, I'll just say $100,000 at the beginning of the year and $120,000 at the end of the year, or if, if it was only worth $70,000 at the end of the year, if you're talking about a defined contribution plan, just because assets fluctuate. There's a lot of different considerations that you'll have to think about and go through as you think about uh, how to split a defined benefit and defined contribution plan. And you need a QDRO, a Quadro, a Qualified Domestic Relations Order, to specifically lay out all of these things, like the method and who's going to get what and, and how it all works in practice. 
And so there's two sets of information in a quadro. There's what we call the basic information and then the more complex information. The basic information is stuff like your personal information, your name, date of birth, et cetera, you and your spouse, et cetera. You're, you're coming to, to make this agreement. And it also includes some other basic but essential information like the valuation date. What day you're going to determine is considered the final value of the plan. You need to pick a date cl as close as you can to the finalization of the divorce and the settlement so that the value of the plan is as accurate as possible. You need to determine how to figure out the gains and the losses in the plan. And you need to figure out what percentage of assets one person's going to receive or if they're going to receive a specific figure. Where the quadros get complicated is that there's some information that they cannot include. And they cannot, for instance, enforce and require that the plan give certain benefits to a spouse or ex-spouse that aren't already allocated as part of the plan. And they also can't give out uh, assets that are already earmarked to another beneficiary. Now, this could come into play if a spouse had a previous marriage and maybe they already went through this process once. Well, you'll need to figure out if their ex-spouse, their first ex-spouse or second ex-spouse or whatever the case may be, already has some of those assets uh, allocated and earmarked to them. That could become a very big issue later as you go through the divorce and you determine your settlement. And the real challenge with retirement plans, the defined contribution and the defined benefit plans is, as I said before, is these documents are very complex and they have within the plan very specific rules into how you can split and perhaps distribute the assets. And if you can, and if you do not follow the rules, the plan can just say, no, that's not right. That's not how we do things. And if you're supposed to get a certain percentage of the assets, but it's not split properly, you could be out those assets until it's corrected because the plans have very strict legal complications and rules to them. And the quadros, the QDROs that you use to split a retirement plan, like a defined benefit or defined contribution plan, they have to be prepared by someone who specializes in preparing those documents. Most states have a firm or there are a few larger firms that specialize in dividing retirement plans. They know how to gather the documents. They know the main rules of each plan and they can walk through the right way to split a defined benefit or defined contribution plan. It's very important to get a specialist in this matter, given the legal and technical and investment complications with this. This is not something that your divorce attorney should put together. That's right. Your divorce attorney should not be splitting defined benefit or defined contribution plans. This is not something that you should give to your financial advisor. This is something you probably shouldn't even give to your accountant. You need to find someone who is a specialist in dividing retirement plans. If you type in QDRO, Quadro, Qualified Domestic Relations Order, and your state, wherever you live, you will be able to find some specialists who work in your area, or you will have to dig around for some referrals. Because if you do not follow the rules with the quadros, you are in a world of disappointment. And it's not an asset that you can just wing it, so to speak, and try and split and come up with your own method for dissolving. So make sure when, you're dis when we're discussing retirement plans and you're going through your divorce, you understand what these assets are. If you have or you've ever heard of any of the terms and you might think that either you or your spouse has one of these plans, that's very important information. You need to be aware of it. Just remember that if you have an IRA, anything that ends or begins with IRA, it is much easier to split. If you have a 401k, a 403b, a pension plan, a profit sharing plan, you will need outside expert help. And given the complications in these plans, you need to get that information as soon as possible. This is not something that can be handled a week before the divorce is supposed to be finalized because 
you could end up in a case where there is something wrong with your quadro and the way that you've decided to split the assets. So you have to go back and forth with the company that owns or manages the defined benefit or defined contribution plan, and they will help you, not necessarily it's uh, willing on their part, but they will help you if you know the right questions. And if you have a specialist helping you, you will be able to get this resolved efficiently and effectively. But if you do not, it will be a very tough process. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you for listening. But before you leave, I have a few things that you should be aware of. The first is the book Divorce and Your Money, the No Nonsense Guide. It is available on Amazon and it's a great resource for you that highlights in detail all the key financial issues as you go through divorce. For instance, there is a one of the longest chapters and most detailed chapters is actually on retirement accounts in today's episode. So it's a great place to look if you have questions about retirement plans. Also, if you would like some personalized one-on-one coaching where we can discuss specific issues related to your divorce, we can discuss retirement plans like on today's episode. Now, I wouldn't help you split a defined benefit or defined contribution plan, but I can certainly walk you through the process and walk you through your options as it comes to retirement plans or any other financial issue as it comes to your divorce. It's easy to book hours with me and the team. You just go to the website. And you go to divorceinyourmoney.com and you click on coaching and there is helpful one-on-one coaching. You can do it by phone, online, or in person, depending upon where you live and what the particular issue is. You can also stay in touch with us. You can email me directly at Sean, S-H-A-W-N, at divorceandyourmoney.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, Please subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Please leave a five-star review, not two stars, not four stars, but five stars, which helps other people discover our podcast. And please share it with a friend. Word of mouth is one of the most powerful resources that you can use to help others. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and certified divorce financial analyst. Thank you for listening.